another Keeping Them Honest report tonight. This one about power, politicians, and money, an awful lot of money. I want to introduce you to Republican Congressman Spencer Backus of Alabama. He's replacing Democrat Barney Frank as head of the powerful House Financial Services Committee. That's the committee which oversees the financial industry and enforces consumer protection laws. Now, Backus hasn't taken over yet, but is already sending some strong signals that he'd like to dismantle or change some of the financial reforms passed last July. Reforms which supporters say prevent will, are meant to prevent another crisis, like the one that led to all those bailouts. Here's a letter that he sent to members of the Financial Services Oversight Council last month expressing concern that shareholders of Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase will be hurt by some of the reforms because the banks would be less profitable. Now, you can agree or disagree with that position, but we think it's worth pointing out that Mr. Backus gets most of his campaign contributions from the finance, insurance, and real estate sectors. Nearly 63 percent, in fact, of his campaign money this past election cycle, according to the Sunlight Foundation and the Center for Responsive Politics. That's a bigger percentage than any other House lawmaker receives from these industries. Now, let's just make clear, he's certainly not the only one taking money from the financial industry. Outgoing Chairman Barney Frank, for instance, got about a third of his campaign contributions from the financial, insurance, and real estate sectors. According to a new report by another group, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington Crew, just about everybody who serves in that committee does very well with contributions. According to Crew, freshman members who sit on financial services outraise their peers by 55 percent. And of course, much of that money comes from the very industry the committee is charged with monitoring. According to Politico, at an Oct October meeting with more than 100 financial industry lobbyists, Bacchus slammed donors who in past years have been more generous with Democrats. He reportedly pointed out that Democrats passed those new regulations, the ones that he's fighting to change. Backus reportedly told lobbyists he wants an equal chunk of their donations. Actually, according to the Center for Responsive Politics, overall, financial lobbyists did now give more money to Republicans than Democrats this year. The question is, what are they getting for all the money? Melanie Sloan, as executive director of CREW, joins me now. Melanie, I mean, what raises eyebrows is Congress people getting money from the very industries that they're overseeing. How much access, how much influence does all that money buy? It buys them tons of access. And it's not just Mr. Bacchus over on financial services. You can expect the members on the Agriculture Committee to be getting money from agribusiness and defense appropriators to be getting money from defense contractors. Frankly, that's just the way the game is played here in Washington. And it's all legal. It's all above board. It's all legal. It's all above board until somebody can prove a bribe that there's a direct exchange, a quid pro quo. But it sure looks like bribery to everyday Americans. Well, you know, some folks, just to play devil's advocate here, will say, well, look, you know, you can't say that the money is necessarily or you can't prove that it's necessarily driving the politics. You, you know, you could say that it's understandable financial money would be directed to people whose politics favor the financial industry or that the industry thinks favors them. Sure, it's a chicken or the egg problem. Which comes first, the contributions or the policy? Uh, but either way, they, they both dovetail nicely together, and you see members of Congress pushing very hard for industries that are dumping money into their campaign coffers every day, and it leaves a lot of Americans cold. Uh, the question is, who's really fighting for our interests if the, the folks on these top committee assignments are really fighting for the interests of those who are giving them the most money? What should we expect for, from the new leadership? I mean, will the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau you know, change demonstrably? Oh, I, I think we are going to see a, a big change in the new leadership. I, I believe Mr. Bacchus has said he's going to reserve every Thursday to have Elizabeth Warren come in and explain herself. Uh, he's uh, already had taken a strong stance against her and is looking to have an investigation into what she does over in the new, uh, in the new agency. And I think he's going to be out there to make trouble for her. Luckily, Elizabeth Warren is uh, a smart cookie, and my money's on her. She can handle herself in front of Mr. Bacchus. You know, uh, you said something interesting uh, uh, to our producers. You said that members of the Financial Service Committee are not necessarily picked for their expertise. That, that, I mean, that kind of surprises me. How can you say that? Right, because what they're actually picked for is their vulnerability for the most part. Most of the members who end up on that committee, particularly freshmen, are there because that committee is known as a, uh, a top uh, donor draw, draw. If you are on that committee, you will bring in more money. As we said, Crew did this study earlier where we found that people on the Financial Services Committee outraised their peers by 55 percent in the freshman class. So you can expect, and we haven't seen yet who's going to be on the Financial Services Committee altogether next year, but you can expect to see a lot of incoming vulnerable Republicans will be put on that committee with the idea that they'll raise a lot of money to help fend off challengers. Uh, fascinating look. Melanie Sloan, appreciate it with crew. Thanks.